Welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 18. Now, I was prompted to uh, talk about this because on the weekend I was um, shopping at the local department store and I was in the uh, electronics, you know, consumer electronics section, the cameras, and they had GPSs, you know, car GPSs and uh, uh, outdoor GPSs. And I saw on the wall a very prominent product. Here it is. Wow, look at this. It's the greatest thing ever. And it's this. It's the Garmin Etrex Yellow, as it's called. And nothing remarkable about that. It's a bottom of the range GPS, of course. And so what's so remarkable about this? Well, I bought this same thing almost 10 years ago. This one, this is my model. It's you know, it's uh, it's 10 years old. In fact, it first came out in uh, 1998. And it got me to thinking, how can a product last that long in the consumer market? I can't think of too many other uh, products, really, that, uh, you know, in the general consumer market have, have lasted so long. It really is remarkable. So let's look at why. Right, so let's start by looking at what people actually want in a GPS. And because I'm an outdoors person and and I'm a geocacher as well. I found hundreds of geocaches with this thing over the years. And um, I, I, I know it pretty much makes up a good GPS and this ticks all the boxes. They really got it right the first time. And I don't think it's an accident. I think the design team that built this um, they, they had, you know, had some, some luck is involved in being first and, and being, you know, and meeting a price point and things like that is important. But why has it survived so long? Because what do people want in the GPS? They want small, right? It's got to fit in your, uh, you know, it's got to fit in your backpack. It's, you know, it's, it's got to be something that, um, that doesn't take up uh, much size or weight. And this thing's only 150 grams. Um, which is five ounces, I think, for you US folk. If you put my 10-year-old one and the new one side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell them the difference. It looks exactly the same. The, uh, the software and the menu, it all still works identically. There's, there's really no difference. Now, another feature of this, which I think is a real winner, and I think uh, you know a lot of thought probably went into it as well, is the colour. It's yellow and it's affectionately known as the Etrex Yellow or the Etrex Yeller for you US folk again, I guess. And, um, and yellow is important because it's high visibility. When you're out in the, uh, you know, when you're out in the scrub or something like that, it's getting dark and you're, you know, you've got all your gear scattered around on the rocks or whatever, you know, having a nice bright yellow is, you know, it makes it real easy to find. And if you're digging around in your pack to get it out, it's an emergency or something, you know, and you need to get it out really quick, it's gonna stand out inside your pack. Oh, there it is, the big yellow thing. Now, the other things you want in a product like this that's absolutely essential is the battery life and the type of battery. Those decisions can absolutely ruin your product or make it a complete success. And Garmin hit upon a winning formula. Um, and I'm sure a lot of thought went into it as well. And they use standard double A's. It's got a removable um, little rubber back compartment and it takes two standard double A batteries and it's got proper firmware support for um, either um, alkaline or rechargeable. You can actually choose it in the software. Um, you know, Garmin thought we need, you know, you want to use this thing for, you know, a good whole day or a good two days or three day hiking trip when you're continuously tracking. So they gave it, you know, 18, 20 hours battery life. They... Now, the other important thing, of course, is that it's rugged. This is, I've never seen a more rugged product in my entire life. It really is quite amazing. The stuff I've done to this, the abuse I've given it, I've dropped it down cliffs into, you know, water, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's gone down, it's rolled down dirt and mud hills. Um, you can take it through the bush and it's got a nice solid um, screen on it, screen protector, so that, you know, if you're walking through the bush in a tree branch, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't destroy the screen. It's incredibly rugged and that's a, that's a winning feature. It's got a solid one case 
um, solid one-piece case design and it's got this rubber surround as well this is really remarkable the rubber around the outside and that really helps you grip because there's nothing worse if you're you know I've been hanging off the side of the cliffs using these things I'm holding on with one hand and I'm you know trying to use the GPS with the other hand and it's you know it really is quite remarkable and there's other uh, small things like the lanyard attachment here it is on the back here I've actually got a shoelace a big thick shoelace I've had on here for 10 years and I think a lot of thought has gone into the uh, you know where they've placed the lanyard too they could have put it on the top which is common for other products or they could have moved it from here up to here you know it could have been on this top edge here but they didn't they put it right here and they put it there for a reason it's because when you've got it around your neck like this I'm really thinking I'll stand up and and show you by having the lanyard down there it centers the weight in the front so it it, it pretty much always um, falls uh, with, with the screen out and then you go to pick it up when you're walking along and you want to look at it you just grab it like that and it's a very natural movement to pick it up and look at it and then you can operate it and it's just in the perfect position and then you just drop it again the next thing I really like about it is the is the one hand operation they've really put a lot of thought into how this thing actually uh, is is used you can do every you do not need ever to use two hands to use this product you have one you hold it in your hand like that and so they've got up down and enter and on the other side that you operate with your thumb they've actually got the power button and they've got a um, mode button and that's it that's the entire user interface and the way they've um, structured the menus it it hasn't changed in 10 years they got it right they put a lot of thought into how the menus actually work and minimizing key presses and things like that and they just hit upon the winning formula from day one now one of the major things with uh, consumer products uh, whether or not they're going to be a success or not is the price point if for two three hundred dollars you can navigate your way you know out of any you know any situation it was fantastic and it was a phenomenal success based on the price point if it was a thousand dollars it it wouldn't have been nearly as popular that's why um that's why today in all sorts of consumer products whether it's a new blu-ray dvd player they they're all you know you'll see it um you know if, if you watch the news and everything they'll say oh they've now met the $300 price point the magic price point and you know and the price points really do go in those multiples of a hundred and there's lots of um, there's been lots of studies involved in actual uh, price points and and how they affect people's buying habits and things like that and you know if it's under $200 they uh, claim well you know uh, people can go out and buy it without their spouse approval you know they won't get into too much trouble and that's you know that that really is quite true you can go out and you know if this is not you know this is like under this is under $100 now so it's under that price point where it's just like an impulse purchase and um, you know price point really matters for your product if it's at the wrong price point it doesn't matter how good the features are how compelling the product is it's gonna be a loser it doesn't have you know fancy mapping like some of the upmarket models have but you pay a huge price premium for those you know double triple four five times the uh, price point you know it keeps creeping up and but you know for, for a GPS a prime purpose an outdoor GPS is to mark your location and mark your trail and it's just got a couple of basic features it needs to do and this one ticks all the boxes I can't think of one box it doesn't actually tick it's remarkable and they got it right the first time and if it didn't have every one of those features uh, I don't think it would have lasted as long or been as popular it's it really was you know it really is the combination of all these things that really make this a remarkably compelling product even today so there it is that's you know how to design a uh, you know a what really matters in a winning consumer product and that applies to niche products as well it's not just consumer so you know think about you know these little things you know lanyard attachment the color the form factor the usability the battery life the type of batteries the way the software operates you know all these things uh, really are you know something tiny can really make or break your product so 
just, you know, it's worth putting a lot of thought into your next design to make it compelling.